Okay, so welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Code of the Jewels unboxing. Uh, I'm Dan, this is Lincoln. We're, what up? We're going to be opening some packs. And uh, basically, if we pull anything good, we're going to tell you what it is and walk you through why it's good. So, and oh boy, are we going to pull some good cards. It could be set to silence. Much like, much like Duel Alliance in the past, starting up with a new archetypes and a new way to play the game. So that's pretty cool. And like straight up, I've opened one of the... New Link monsters for the World Chalice archetype, being Orem the World Chalice Blade Master, and I don't know what it does yet. Ah, uh, he's the he's medium thick boy. Medium thick boy. So the, the World Chalices have uh, one guy who can be of one, uh, then two, then three, and you want to get to like the three guy basically. Actually, excitingly, we got an OCG import I've been looking to have for a long time, which is Galaxy Worm. Just basically like a nice little level 3, and when you normal summon him and you don't have to control another monster, it summons another level 3. So he's kind of like a terror top, but much worse, and he's kind of like a tour guide, but much worse. But, in the time that both those cards are limited, he's sort of like your go-to one card rank yeah, 3. You're allowed to play 3 of them. Yeah, you are definitely allowed to play 3 of them, which uh, is always really handy. Okay, well, uh, I have a uh, emerging emergency rescue rescue. Hey, so does Lincoln, that's great. So this is the card that we want to get from this pack the most, which is rescue hamster. Uh, rescue... Ferret. Ferret. They keep changing the animal. Anyway, I'm really hoping we get to that so we can talk about that later, but that card is bananas. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, there is a Lila Twilight Swan Enchantress. Yeah, there's a bunch of new Light Swans in the set. So for those of you who are a big fan of Light Swan, now they have dark edgy versions, which you're also probably a fan of if you're a fan of Light Swan, let's be real. Uh, uh, I, got another, I got another medium thick boy. Oh, uh, that's good. That's what you want. Uh, so, ooh, Mandrake Revenant. Probably the take home from this set, uh, just as we open these packs, because exactly three monster, three link monsters have existed up until this point. Basically, all the link monsters in the set are worthwhile. You just want to hold on to any blue monsters you get because the more blue monsters, especially you the have, ones that are as generic as possible. So all the ones that yeah. secret rare that say that don't have archetypes mentioned on them, they're the ones you want to keep because they might not be like obviously insane now, but going forward into more like link combo decks, uh, you're gonna want your firewall, your guy saber, and your topolic bomber. Do they still call it topolic bomber dragon? Yeah, it's just bomb. logic. Oh, oh, and we have our first secret rare, also for World Chalice and also a Link Monster. We have a. Yeah, you, you go with this because I'm uh, just the worst at pronouncing uh, things. Ningiasu, the World Chalice Warrior. He is, I believe, the thickest thick boy. Uh, he requires two Link Monsters to make, so he's like actually. Two generic Link Monsters? Uh, just, just any two Link Monsters. Oh, that's actually really interesting uh, then. That means you could just play him in decks that aren't World Chalice. Yeah, that's cool. Um. But, I mean, he's a Link 3, so you can't make him with two Link Spiders, obviously. Like, right, that's yes. Kind of the, that, that's, that's the scam, scam yeah. Uh, so I can't just summon Gofu and then summon this gentleman. Yeah, the good news is that... Uh, oh, cool. So once per turn, he sent a card from both players' field to the graveyard. So I'm assuming you get to choose what goes from their field, but it's like share the pain. Yeah, but uh, most of the World Chalice cards, when they're sent to the grave, uh, I think they add a World Chalice or add a normal from your grave to your hand. Right, uh, yeah. So you kind of like, you just send the guy that. Is it like share the pain that if they guys aren't affected by monster effects, they don't. It, Ooh, it doesn't say make your opponent send a card, or does it just say send no, one? No, it says to send one from both. But it is non targeted removal, which is always just the best. That's like premium removal. Uh, premium removal is good to have. In the world of good generic cards. Oh, is this back to the front lines? Back to the front. This card is great. It's like Oasis of Dragon Souls, but without the continuous, so they can't Cosmic Cyclone and MST it in response. Dragon it in response. It also doesn't make you monster a worm, so if you summon Overraptor, you can still make Logier and cut it with it. It literally is just straight up special to summon a monster from your graveyard in defense position. Really unawkward, really uncomplicated, very nicely powerful card. Also, Satella can play nine Call of the Haunteds now is... if they wanted to. But in that deck, it's worse because Trevor resetting yeah, your cards is really neat. Uh, we also got our first Trick Star card. Uh, Trickstar Lycros. So this archer is really interesting. Um, they also got one. Hey, nice. Uh, they're all kind of like Get out of my head. it's sort of a burn deck, but not. You could play as burn deck, but it's not really a burn deck. Uh, they all have effects like this one, for example, is every time your opponent draws a card, it inflicts some damage to them. Which is where you get most of the burn damage out of the deck from. The coolest thing that I like the most about the the Trickster deck is they're very like uh, they're kind of like TGs. If anyone remembers that far back, all the cards are like. Search something, search something, search something, search something when this dies, special summon something. So they just really like float. They yeah. all gain value, like, and, then, and it's very neat I mean, to have like, like a, a plus one archetype. Yeah, like Field Spell searches for a Trickstar monster, and then they have a monster that searches for a Trickstar card. Yep, so and then you have your trap, which is uh, banish the cards in that, your opponent's hand. 
and they draw that many cards, and then you can banish it from the grave. Just special one from grave, I think. Yeah. And, and then, then the one you special from the grave will also trigger to search for another field spell and or another monster. She, and then uh, she bounces back to hand, so you can do stuff like summon your mm. guy. You can summon your Stratos because they have a Stratos for every card. And bounce back to hand, and then you can just use it again next time. It's really neat. Mm. Also, you get to play Honest, which is extremely fun. Really lovely to play against. It's yeah. One of my favorite cards in the game. Nothing better than attacking the small light monsters in your opponent just walks at their hand. Don't do it. Don't be this way. Uh, oh, cool! I got one of the new DDD dudes. Oh, nice. Uh, Mr. Wave High King Caesar. I think this is one of the less good ones. Uh, like one of the less important ones because I think the new big synchros are the kind of the jam. One day, one day we'll call a different super. You and I. But what is happening? Mm, oh, are we just stop. Stop it. It's all mirrored. Uh, oh, the uh, the FA cards are kind of cool. Oh yeah, they, they could have just made more uh, ultimate athletes, but instead they wanted to make future athletes. Yeah, so, so they, they did. They're all race cards. Everyone likes race cards. Uh, they all get like counters when you activate FA spells, which is kind of cool, and then they get sweet effects based on their level. They'll be like pretty good when there's more of them, but unfortunately there's like two monsters and two spells. There's like two monsters and two spells right now, but they really have potential because their effects are like super powerful. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like cliff orts where they're unaffected by a bunch of stuff. One of them attacks like twice, which puts, is just going to put on a million damage in the future. Yeah, they'll get like uh, more damage. Basically. The problem that I have with them so far is neither of their spells gain value. They're yes. both just like make your guy bigger. So they're basically like equip spells, but they're not permanent. So you kind of going to go down on cards, and going down on cards isn't super helpful. Once but, they get a like a normal spell, that's just like add it. Yeah, they'll, they'll get a normal spell that'll just be like, I don't know, it'll be like search one, add counters, special one from grave, add counters. Stuff like that. They're also kind of like, uh, what's it, Fortune Ladies, where they level up over time, so that's mm. kind of neat if people remember that. But uh, for my, my pack, which I got really cool, was uh, March of the Dark Brigade. To show off the new edgy light swarms. Nowhere near as good as Charge of the Light Brigade because Grave to Hand is always much worse than Deck to Hand mm. because you can't just start your turn by activating March of the Dark Brigade. As far as cards go, Light Swarm sent a lot of cards from Deck to Graveyard, so uh, this is really handy. It also just enables all you guys because I'm pretty sure it banishes. Yeah, it'll banish three or four cards. So I think like the, 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 the angle with the Twilight Swarm deck is you're not trying to build like a Twilight Swarm deck. You're no, like, you just put like a few of them into the already Light Swarm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Luminous, the new Lumina is really good if you have if you draw it sometimes. Like you, could, it's like banish one from Grave Special, or banish one I think. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. They will trigger multiple times a turn as well. So if you have like. They all say uh, send cards from deck to grave when a light swarm effect triggers. So you can have like Raiden, and you can go like mill two for Raiden, mill two for Garroth, mill three for Lumina, mill two for Garroth. Right? Is this the way they work, or am I yeah, reading it that's incorrectly? Pretty, that's pretty much it. So you just you mill a lot of cards. Uh, also, you, your dark stuff like enables all of your um, like chaos monsters, like Black Monster Soldier. They already played some density those in light swarm. Also, uh, as I've just been patched in from my ear patcher. Uh, they banish cards from the top of your deck, which really triggers all the Shiver and Yeah, people so were, that's pretty neat. People already playing last Speaking of Shiver and Shiver and I got a Van Dread, which is the other TCG archetype, the one that I'm actually really excited about. Insane. This archetype Probably has insane. the backbones to, in a couple more sets, when they get some more support, to be completely busted. Uh, the ritual spell is Necro's Cycle plus Necro's Exo Mirror. Uh, and Return of the Dragon Lords. And Return of the Dragon Lords. Also, you can pre preparation for it, which is a plus one card that searches for two, which is insane. Uh, the ritual monster can be special summoned from the graveyard, unlike all the Necros monsters. So you can Mizuki it, you can walk and Flap it, you can call the haunted it, back to the front lines, it, whatever. Uh, and all the effects that they, be, that they gain from the Vandred monsters so far are pretty impactful. They're like the standard when you see like an archetype that's good. Usually they have like an MST effect. They usually have a banishing monster or a destroy monster effect, and that's what they have so far. They have like get rid of a special summon monster, and they have get rid of a spell or a trap. And this is like the first set. This is the first set. Yeah, it's like when BA first came out. And, and then they, they got like a search guy, a special guy, a special from graveyard guy, a good monster, and a trap that wasn't playable yet. And then it, it took it's like, very similar to that. It took two more really mediocre BAs to make that deck become like an actual deck forever. Like, of note though, the Vandreads only give effects to the rituals when they're on field already. Yeah. So that's kind of like a good limiter, so you can't just like grass mill 20, then banish them all for your ritual man. But uh, they have a lot of potential, especially just because zombies are one of the most supported archetypes that yeah. exist. You Mizuki, like, Zombie Lord, Book of Life, Shiranui Solitaire, Plague Spreader Zombie. There's like a million. Also, they're dark, and dark is like the most supported thing ever. So you have Lure, yeah. you have like Beginning of the End if we end up milling that far it's, down. Can't be it's like a billion. It's, it's really nice when an archetype comes out and it isn't like 
thunder winds, mm. and it's just like it's a bunch of like cross cards. That just yeah, it's just like it. well, they didn't give us a Vandred brawl spell or a Vandred monster board. You can just activate the card that already exists. Yeah, it's really neat. Like, uh, trap hole. Everyone knows trap holes is a new one. Uh, it's a little hard to pass. Break off trap hole. Yeah, so it's uh, when a link monster is link summoned, destroy all monsters in the field that are not linked. Uh, and by linked, it means anything that doesn't have an arrow pointing at it, from what I understand. Correct. So if you just summon like a deco talker in your extra monster zone, it's not pointing at anything and it's not being pointed at, so that's everything. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. It's probably going to end up being good in the future when link monsters are really ubiquitous. At the moment, it's kind of like the start of Linux Seeds came out where you played 12 synchros and 3 Seeds. Most, most of the time, right, you're going to. Like have some dudes on the field, and then you're gonna link something into a guy, and that removes your dudes. So I know this. I know Goki's the archetype you wanted to talk about, and I've got the card that's, and I'm oh. just reading here because I haven't read these cards. I also have yet. the card because we're playing the same Stop same doing one. that! <laughs> we're just doing it. Twinsies. Uh, okay, so Goki it says target two engraved and special summon them, and that's two monsters special yep. from grave. Just a nice little generic spell. These are the kind of cards that are nice to look for when you're looking for a, a, a good archetype. So uh, Goki are. Uh, very budget at this stage. Uh, they're played by like the equivalent of the guy who played the Super Heavy Samurai deck, which could be worrying because that deck was never really a real deck. Uh, but Gokis have already quite a few cards. All of the monsters say when this card's sent from the field to the grave, add a Goki card with a different name for your deck to your hand, including the uh, bring back two Gokis card. I'm sure I have some of the monsters in the hand. And uh, obviously, sending cards to the grave for link monsters counts. So you can send cards and just add two cards back and lose zero monsters. So what are you gaining? What's your like? What's your big man that you summon? What's okay. your game plan? So uh, big guy, big guy is link three requires at least two Gokies, like a two plus Gokies, so probably three. Really you know his name? Uh, Great Ogre. Uh, his whole deal is almost on the field lose attack equal to the original defense. He doesn't have any defense because he's a link monster, and none of the Gokies have defense either. So basically, you make all their dudes real small. And your dude's real big. We got our boxes. Second secret rare in Trickster Reincarnation. Hey. I was really hoping for a firewall or a rescue ferret so I could talk about how insane those cards are. Those are the cards that when you buy a box of this set, they like what you that's what you're looking for. Trickster Reincarnation is another one. Uh, so in the actual Trickster deck, uh, the really cool thing that I like about it is it's it's the combo of like Drawnlock and Durendal. So basically the idea is Drawnlock says to your opponent, uh, after they add a card from the deck to the hand, including drawing it, for the rest of the turn they can no longer do that. They can no longer search cards, they can no longer draw cards. So, instead of what the normal thing is, where you go, I'll activate reinforcements to the army from Roaring Captain, you go, Drone Lock Bird, you cannot activate any more cards like that this turn. It's, uh, you make them shuffle their hand into their deck, uh, and in so you activate an effect to make them draw a card, basically. Or you wait for them to search a card, because every deck does that. Every deck And then in response, you say, you're going to shuffle your hand back and draw that many cards. And then in response to that, you say, you can't draw cards anymore. So basically what you do is you put their hand back and they don't get another hand. Mm -hmm. Which is super powerful, because... They don't have cards now. Yep. Meanwhile, you're looping your. Meanwhile, uh, you have cards. You're looping this card, which is the Trickstar Candina. She searches for. Oh, is she little Stratos? Yeah, she is little Stratos. Uh, so she's normal summon. Oh, she's even 18. That's a good stat line. Yep. Normal summon, add a Trickstar card from your deck to your hand, and then every time your opponent activates a spell. Trickstar card. card, right. That's the important part. She can also search the field spell, and, and she, she can, can search the reincarnation. reincarnation. Um, importantly, the best part about the Trickstar Reincarnation trick, which everyone's been doing with Drendel and mm. Dolanoff. Dr Drendel and Dolanoff, but, or so, Disturbance Strategy, Protector of the Sanctuary is yeah. the other one. So, Drendel is uh, symmetrical, so you and your opponent both shuffle your hand into your deck, and then because of Dolanoff, but neither of you can. Right, win. yes. So the idea is meant to be like, you you know, so you set all your cards and you kind of have cards and they don't. Uh, Trickstar Reincarnation is just your opponent. So, you can have five cards in hand and you can do it. And, and they, they, they lose their hand and you keep Also, going. what's cool is if you don't have a draw knock bird, because you can only play three, there's minimal ways to actually search for one. Uh, Trickster Reincarnation is kind of just a reasonable card, so you can yeah. wait for them to search for like their masterpiece and set their combo up in hand, because that's generally what decks do. They'll search for like their masterpiece and their heritage. And then you can just say, banish your hand, draw five. So it's kind of like the Pot of Desires thing where it doesn't really matter that much until it does. Like if you just hit double masterpiece out of their hand, you can just activate this whenever, because it's not actually a minus one, because it has a grape effect to special any of your tricks back in the graveyard. Uh, which you can do the turn of sent to the grave, which is actually kind of insane. Yeah, it's really good. So the, is, uh, is there a Stratos once per turn? I'm assuming none of these cards the are once per turn. Stratos is normal summon, but uh, this one... Oh, which one's normal summon? This one, quick effect That's down to the That's slightly I was really hoping you could reincarnate her uh, yeah, and still... It, that would be completely uh, insane. You just search another reincarnation. Yeah. Yes. Um, like this one, for example, she her bounce back to him is a quick effect, so you can like revive your Candida oh, and bounce back Oh, that's right, yeah. Chain summoning is the reason that that's important, is because you'll summon your 
Candida? Candida, you'll activate the effect in response, you activate chain summoning, and then you can just search for more Candidas, she's the Stratos. Well, yeah, so you can you normal summon, chain summon, 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 Many creature. Many creatures. Uh, also, she obviously burns you a predatory card they draw, so making them shuffle their hand and then draw a bunch of cards is really <laughs> cool. And they Treasure get a lot of burn damage. <laughs> Treasure uh, and This is uh, Revendred Slayer. He is our only Revendred ritual monster so far. And he's a rare, which is crazy. They're it is crazy. This, the, the archetype has like super, super common secret, which is the, the trap, which you should have to play. The, the trap, trap is. is secret, right? Trap's powerful, but I don't think it's mandatory. Yeah. It's kind of slow. It's kind of insane that this, like, this card is going to be like the core. This is the Dante of the other That's, that's right? the man. Yeah. He's yeah. the man. They'll probably get a Virgil, and then they'll probably get a Beatrice later. But I'm, from what I'm assuming of this archetype, they're not going to be like Necros where they have like 25 ritual monsters. They're going to have him. Well, the, and the, then they're going to have a bunch of main deck minions yeah. to make him. Importantly, like the, um, the field spell, or the ritual spell, sorry, only protects this guy's man. So if they release a bunch of ritual monsters with different names, it's just not going to work. So it's obviously just this guy. While you played fetch, I studied the blade. Why does Riker have a cloak and a knife? <laughs> he has a he has a big like devil may cry cloak and like a glowing red dagger in his mouth. Riker joined the so angry. Riker joined the anime club in his high school, and then <laughs> he got real upset about he started it. Started listening to death metal and disrespect. Oh, that's the that's the anime guys. Club, oh, right? okay. Well, we're talking about the anime combo. Here you go. Here's here's your I'm winning the sneak peek combo. I actually bought a good card. He's gonna be pulling out the uh, sick anime card. While your opponent controls their monsters, special summon Hackworm from your hand. If you special summon two of them, then you double tribute for Cracking Dragon. And he's really big. There you go. You want a sneak peek. Is that the combo? Yeah, it's that's... a special two guys and then summon Crack Dragon? Yep, that's it. That's the whole combo. Anime. They start with four cards in hand, and three of his cards were that, and one card was a card that protected the Kraken Dragon. Meanwhile, I get double MST, which is insane, by the way. Yeah, please just talk about your good cards. Heavy Storm Duster is really powerful, and it kind of is a nice thing, because the uh, the spells and traps that we're getting currently are sort of like outpacing the removal for spells and traps. Ever since like Heavy Storm's been banned. Uh, so we had Twin Twisters, which is nice, but it costs you two cards, so you break even. Sometimes they chain those cards, so you don't break even. Heavy Storm Duster is a nice little, like, you can't use it like Heavy Storm, where you should just activate it and then OTK your opponent, because A, it's a trap, B, it says you can't conduct a battle phase until you activate it. But it's super nice, because if you're playing against a trap-heavy deck, like Pure Zoo, Paleozoic, uh, Satellanite, like other Trinidad deck that many... Uh, it's not as insane against that, because yeah, they, get value. they get value when you destroy them. But like, any deck that sets a lot of cards when they when, in their end phase... Sorry, that sets a lot of cards. You can just double... You can just put this in the end phase and hit two cards, you can hit their field spells with it. It's just a nice little card that... It's like... Will probably be a sideboard card forever. Yeah, that's and, and then like really trap heavy meta games, you can main deck. Generic, it. generic spell and trap removal is like like imagine set. imagine back in hat format, this card would have been insane. Like people cut MST because of artifacts, but like this is a plus one end backer removal. It would have been just insane. I kind of wish it came out a few years ago, but like we have it now and it's really neat. So I want to talk about it for just a moment. Is this a world chalice gentleman? Yeah, she is, she's a world chalice lady. A world chalice um, real. My favorite thing about it is it. I really hope they keep going with this design direction with link monsters. Uh, so her requirement, right, is two monsters with different types and attributes. Which, like, the world chalice has like a, like a wind dragon and like a fire warrior and just a million different things. What I love is they they didn't make her two monsters, which would probably be a little crazy, and they didn't make her two world chalice monsters where you can only play her in world chalice. She's two monsters with different types and attributes. So if you're playing a deck that runs like light fairies and dark fiends, you can make them. I don't know why you want to, but you can. Yeah. So that's important. It's very cool because when you have like exceeds, almost all of them are very generic. Synchro is to a uh, big degree as well. And I think they must have realized, hopefully they continue doing it this way, when they made the link monsters, that they're basically just strictly better synchros because they're way easier to access because you just put scapegoat and make the equivalent of like, I don't know. Maybe not Trishula, but like kind of close to that. Pretty good card. Um, so, all the powerful ones, apart from Firewall and Topolic Bomber, so far, uh, seem to be really gated behind restrict like restrictions. So there'll be like two water monsters, or there'll be two monsters of the same type, two monsters not of the same type, two World Chalice monsters, two Link monsters. So that your extra deck isn't always just like, well man, if Exiton came out and it's $150, and if I play two yeah, level, if I play level fours, I have to play it. It's like, it's going to be less of that, and more of like, more cards like Lagia and Dolka, where they're like super, super powerful, but only dinosaurs get to play it. And I think it's like, the other problem with Xyz is the ones that were generic were like, 
too specific, right? Yeah, like a lot of like, the time. There were like two arch Two level monster. six dinosaurs. Or the two, two level monsters of a specific arch type. And it's like, well, the exit is good, that arch type's good. Like, that's just how it is now. Like, Zodiacs, obviously, you can make with hard, like, you just hard make them. Yeah, yeah, Broadball being two level fours. You're not, you're not making a Dryad with three level fours or whatever. Four level fours. Four level fours. fours. You're making Dryad with one Zodiac monster. Like, I think the whole point of Links is they realize, like, they can make them not generic and also not super specific. I mean, even some of the ones that are at now, like, if they were just two monsters, would just be two, way too good, because you could just special go through and then two tokens, here's your gentleman. Yep. Like, so I would expect going forward that the good Link monsters are all, like, Link 3 and 4, and they're all either restrictive or, I don't know, I really hope we don't see too many more firewalls. That card is potentially very spooky. There's just a lot of, like, uh, from all the ones I've, like, sort of seen, there's a lot of, like, two dragons except tokens, which is great, because there's just one of any dragon deck. Kids love dragons. Like, small children can play that card with like their I'll level something by 2,000 dragon that doesn't do anything. I'll level something by 2,000 dragon that doesn't do anything. Rink Shotgun! Link, Link Monster. Like, that's completely fine, right? Trap Tricks has got a Stratos. I wish it existed three years ago. God. It doesn't. It didn't. And it's not going to ever change the game at all. And probably no one is going to play it in a tier one deck. But I'm absolutely it's kind of so cool that they have a Stratos. It's going in the time machine. So all this page that says, there's just three, go, three Trap Tricks mantis and here you go. Uh, I have a couple of good ones here, actually. Oh, this is a good one to have. Speaking of, we're talking on Trixes now. We just got a light stage, Ooh, which is really like best ultra in the set for sure because yeah. it says it's basically like field spells these days. Are always when this card is activated, search for a card of your archetype, do minor things. That's basically every field spell. Yep. And this one is don't not do minor things, do major things. So it's when it's activated, search for a Trixer monster. Which is uh, insane. basically its effect is bait doll. So like it targets the back row. And uh, let me just. Well, Targets the back row. They can't activate it that turn, so you lock it down so you can do all your stuff. And then at the end of the turn, they can either activate it or send it to the ground. Right. So if it's like Solemn Strike, they can't just activate it for That's no the reason. Best part. Yeah. So if you just tricks the light stage, you target the Solemn Strike. They just don't get it. It's yep. basically just like it goes it, and then at the end of the turn, it sends it to the graveyard. Yep. And Very powerful. Uh, well, also, also searching for you guys. Them. Also, every time one of your tricks just burns them, this burns them for two hundred, which is where a lot of the burn damage adds up. So yeah, the, the neat thing is that if you like, I don't know, if you're, it all stacks every time the trick spells burn, right? So if your opponent like activates a spell that draws them a card and you have a candy and a lacris and that on the field, it's like burn you because you activated a spell, also my field spell burns you. Burn you because you drew a card, also my field spell burns you. And it just, it really starts to tick up pretty quickly. It really does add up, especially because every time you activate tricks to re it usually burns them for about 15, 16, 1600 or so. Uh, so Goki Suprex, and we already spoke about Goki's. This is this is the key guy, and he's a rare. Like he's like, he's the good one. He's uh, he's 800 strong, I and mean, when he's normal size, he's special the Goki in your hand. So that's kind of how you accelerate to like more than one monster. Uh, and yeah, all of them have the effect of when hey. you set the grave as different Goki cards, which is great. Hey, speaking of, I pulled the big man. So hey, big here you go, Dan. You can talk about Goki the Great Oko. Yeah, he's so cool. Um, I really like that they immediately gave us a Link monster that abused the fact that Link monsters don't have defense points. Oh yeah, it's, it's so really cute. neat, right? It's so cute. They didn't have to, but they did. It's just like, oh, they all lose attack equal their defense. Oh, I don't have any defense. Oh, what's happening, boys? Uh, you can also protect it by tributing a monster. Uh, tributing is it tributing? Uh, oh, you can destroy, destroy a monster points yeah, to instead. You can destroy monster I really like the fact that it down. points triple downwards. Mm, That's really yeah. nice for when you want to link someone to other monsters. Yeah, there's a world where like, if, I don't know, if you, if Gokis can ever reliably get three monsters on the table for free, He's actually just kind of good. You should probably play World Chalices, mostly because they get to play Little Green Dragon Man. He's so cute. He's also a hand trap. Oh, really? Mm, if a card with target a linked monster you control, you can sky instead of... A linked monster. Huh? Yeah. A linked monster. So not a linked monster. Anything an arrow is pointing Anything to. Anything an arrow is pointing to. Uh, Including is... a linked monster if a linked monster is pointing at that linked monster. Yep. So if you have two linked monsters pointing at each other, you just... Little Green Dragon says no. It's fantastic. And the cool thing about uh, hand traps, even like this one, you should just own three of every hand trap yep. because... They'll come up. Eventually, the artifact Lancey of, of the world becomes very good. Uh, and this one, like, this, this one, is kind of like Solverus this doesn't, in that sort of way, where it just generically world protect your guy. Yeah, this doesn't yeah, say world It doesn't say you protect one of your world child's link monsters, it's just one monster that an arrow is pointing at. Yep. In the you, future, you're probably going to have many monsters with arrows pointing at them. If you're going to play link monsters at any point ever in this literally everyone has to play link monsters format, you're probably going to want three of the guy that says the guy you're pointing to with your link monster doesn't die. I'm just saying. And it's an ultra, so it's gonna be like five dollars in four weeks. Maybe. Basically, maybe from this set, the cards that you should get to future-proof your set for the rest of the game is: if you find rescue ferrets and they are 
like 30 bucks, maybe yeah. even less, buy a playset yep. because there is no way that that card doesn't end up limited in a couple of years. Let, okay, let's talk about some of the stuff we did before. So, uh, Rescue Ferret. It says, uh, so it says, you contribute this normal summon monster? Sounds correct. I think. Look, we'll, we'll get the text real quick, but in essence, its effect when it resolves is you contribute it and special summon two monsters from your deck, total level six, uh, to arrows where are uh, pointing on your field. Yeah. So you'll have like uh, this guy. Any of his three to go down, you can put or two monsters. Dino Talker points at two, or Mrs. Radiant points at right, two. Right, yeah. So, or Firewall points forward, triple down, I think. Uh, yes, that so kind of stuff. Yeah. But, uh, it doesn't restrict what type of monster. It's not like Rescue Cat where it has to be Beast. Beast. It's not like Rescue Rabbit where it has to be Vanillas. It's just total level six. And it can be two of the same, it can be a one, it can be a five, it can be uh, a, tutor, a two and a, and a six. Tutor. It doesn't restrict you from synchroing with them. Yep. It doesn't restrict you from exceeding with them. Yep. Uh, it doesn't restrict them from being like Dandelion, which gives you tokens, which then you link with the tokens. So it's not going to happen yet, I don't think, because there isn't just like a density of link monsters to make this just like... It's, well, it also, neatly, isn't just like Rescue Rabbit where you start your turn with it. No. Where you just normal summon it and activate its effect. It's a combo extender. Yeah, you need uh, to have a link monster. But right. it's a combo extender that is grossly powerful. Mm -hmm. Because just being able to special summon two monsters of your choice from your deck is kind of insane. What because you can special, like... Let's say you can special level leader and like Oh any good fire. Any good fire. Any good fire. Sorry, right. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm sure. There's some sort of value fire book out there. Like the entire point really, I think, is that like you At the moment what it lacks is if you already have a link monster that's like, let's say link link two, which is like the bare minimum, like it's pointing two down, and you rescue ferret. You can like rescue Fair for like Sangha and Dandelion and make a link for and then get two tokens and then make like a link two with the tokens. But I think at the moment what we're lacking is like a decent link four and link two to go into. Like even if you go into like Fire or Dragon, it's like, okay now what? Like that doesn't actually win you the game. Oh. It's not even a monster that has to be normal so and it just says you can shuffle this into your deck, special on monsters in your deck, oh, up oh. to that. Uh, they have their effects negated on the field. Uh, and destroy them in the other turn. So effects to get it on the field is really neat. But, uh, that kind of limits a little bit. But yeah. It doesn't stop their graveyard effects, which noticeably link monsters send cards to the graveyard yep. to trigger their graveyard effects. So the, the most of the time, the way you're going to be summoning uh, rescue ferret is a firewall dragon's effect that says when a monster that is linked to the firewall dragon leaves the field, especially on a monster in your hand, which is in once per turn and is as many times as you can. So basically, what happens is you have firewall dragon. Uh, you leaves. link with something that was pointing at uh, the firewall dragon was pointing to. You special ferret. Into one of the firewall zones, you shuffle Ferret into your deck, you special two from deck, your firewall triggers again, you special from hand again. You're probably making another firewall again. Yep. Probably with a dandelion and let's say Sangan. Or yep. two dandelions if dandelion comes back off the list, God forbid. Uh, and you end up with two tokens and you search a maxi. And you have yeah, two it's dragons. similar if you've ever played against like the Synchro Dark combos. Those yeah. are definitely the sort of decks that could be played. The nice thing about those sort of like Synchro Dark combos is they're super, super fragile to get started until they're not, until they're like super ubiquitous. I mean, a lot of the time, right, if you have a Firewall Dragon and something pointing at it and a Rescue Ferret, they're gonna, they would have stopped the first Firewall if they could Yeah, yeah. So now they, you're just in. If, now you if you're at that nothing. point, definitely, yeah. yeah. You assume they have nothing and your fire, Ferret is resolving, and then your Ferret is resolving. It's, it's, it's not really the kind of card you can just put in Zoo. It's all no, like, no. And it's not like Rescue Rabbit where it just creates a deck around it. I think it's like... And the, it's not just like generically broken in every second archetype like Rescue Cat was, but I think going forward once... Because, you know, in, we're going to get... What, like a dozen sets with link monsters in them, so maybe like, more. Eventually, like eventually, it will be broken. Like all of these mechanics, there's gonna have to be some sort of deck that's like not an arch type, but they create enough, you know, one card link monsters or link monster support cards that someone builds just like a forty card jank spew link monster deck. It, it's what Dark Tinker is, right? Like Dark Tinker runs like. Yang it runs like the weirdest and, pile of like yeah, like black wings, Yangs, red resonator, synchrons, like just. Plants, random stuff, random stuff in the extra Miracle deck. Synchro, uh, Synchro Fusionist, like, yeah, but, all of these just, like, weird cards. But all those cards individually, like, none of them were great, and then someone's like, oh, yeah, we You just make TG Pipe Librarian, and you draw your entire deck, and then they don't have a hand anymore. You, you went from having 39 half-decent Synchro cards to 40 half-decent Synchro cards, and someone went, oh, we can build this deck now, and it was stupid. And then, because then with Exe, like, you, there was so many just, like, I'll run, like, uh, you know, my Clown Blade. Originally, it was just... Guide, feet, speed originally, it seeds. Which is like you play your standard tank you plant deck, and then sometimes you're two level fours, and you're like, man, this would be nice if it could be a utopia. Yeah. And right, that's what that's what it is right now. It's like, man, 
these dudes that are on the field, it'd be nice if they could just be a decode talker. It'd be nice if they could just be a uh, outcastic magician, which comes out next set. Yeah. She's a nice, she's I mean, a nice little generic. We already have enough cards that are like kind of good link monster cards, right? We have like scapegoat, go through. But you can't just build the six scape, uh, the three scapegoat, three go through deck. No, no, because like, scapegoat's like really slow. Yeah, but I mean, then they release like you know next set main character guy gets like uh, normal summon a monster from your hand to special summon a monster from your grave can only be used for a link summon. Yeah, you start and, getting like enough of those. Yeah, and you special summon back a dandelion. It's like, well, that's a fire dragon. Right? Like, Basically, that's... I think when it starts getting scary is when we get link monsters that create monsters. Correct. And the only two that I've seen so far that really do that, three that do that so far. It's Firewall, which special from hand, which leads to a lot of very degenerate combos, but they're sort of like very glass cannon. So far, they're pretty fair because if your opponent has any hand traps or if you just don't draw the right three cards or whatever, you just can't get there. Uh, we'll see if it builds your deck with a bunch of like really bad cards in it, like Dandelion, which if you just draw by itself is quite terrible. But like in the future, especially like the one, the one that's really scary to me is the Spiral uh, Link, which is straying away from this set, this in general, but like when Link monsters come out, especially like the Spiral one because it's a Link 2 that creates a monster, and then the monster it creates also creates more monsters, it's just going to get to the point where it's going to summon whatever the new broken link monsters are and it's going to summon a lot of them. And Ferret's going to fit into those kind of strategies and so will Firewall Dragon. So if you can get those cards for not insane amounts of prizes, I would say get Ferret, maybe hold off on Firewall because Firewall is prominent in the anime and cards that are prominent in the anime tend to be reprinted often. It'll probably It's like Odd Eyes, right? It's basically the Odd Eyes of this generation. And Odd Eyes was reprinted in a tin and like 15 star packs so like i wouldn't be surprised if firewall does the same thing but then again odd wasn't meta defining here is your big card so it might change because of that as well uh so just as a, a recap with this many link monsters from our box yeah, it's pretty sweet that's a what it's seven link monsters that, that's a lot that's that's you need some and now we have some this is a good deal it's so. better than duelist alliance that when it came out there was like two three pendulum cards in it this set comes out with Two different link archetypes and a bunch of generic ones, so it's pretty sweet, honestly. Yeah, definitely worth picking up. I really like to look at these World Chalice cards. The link monsters in general just look really cool, right? We only have like, like the Seeker one especially. Seeker guy, very pretty, very pretty card. And I'm looking forward to actually having like an extra deck full of just like the blue hexagon guys. Ooh, this guy lets you go fast. This green dragon man lets you go fast. Yeah, yeah, he points at a guy, destroys it. Oh, he, he points upwards. He points he only, only upwards. upwards. He points only upwards and he destroys their guy. It's cool. Don't summon monsters in extra and zones extra decks are pointing to if it doesn't matter to you. Sometimes it matter. The other link monster we didn't get that's really important though was Mrs. Radiant. That's gonna be the most meta relevant one for a while. Mostly because it lets Zoo function kinda of like it did before. Yeah, uh, Zoo's yeah. basically the same deck, it's just occasionally we'll make Mrs. Radiant. Most of the time it won't. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time it will just make a Mrs. Radiant. Most of the time it's gonna make a Dryden. Then it's going to shack and another dragon, and then you're going to have two dragons, but one of them is going to be the main monster. It's kind of, it's very convenient of them to really shack and iron a monster that just spews an extra zodiac right before they release a card that's like, you probably need to invest two zodiacs into this for a It helps very much, mm. yes. So if you thought Zoo was dead, no. Not until the ban list says you can't play any of them. Yeah, they, that deck's not going to go from number one to number two. When they get rid of it, it's, it's going to... We're going to be playing that versus our uh, hybrid chain. So yeah, cards that look forward out of this set: uh, Firewall, definitely Rescue Ferret, hundred percent. These are just generically good cards. You should probably own three any of this guy eventually because he's a hand trap, and hand traps are great. Any blue monster. Uh, any blue monster. Well, like if you want to build their archetype, especially you're going to need to get through yeah. every card in the archetype. You can probably slaughter um, all the ones you don't really care. Back about. to the front's a great card. You should probably just own that as well. Yeah, it definitely like Oasis of Dragon Soul was a five dollar card for a while just because it was like oldish and very good. When it, I, by the time it got good, it was um, like kind of old. Uh, double Dust Storm is what heavy it used to be called. Heavy Dust Storm. Probably should get a playset of that as well. Uh, that's really handy. If you want to make uh, level 3 exceeds, Galaxy Worms nice. The other cool thing about Galaxy Worms is just a monster that creates a monster to link someone with. Which is pretty cool. It can make uh, the Digibug exceed, it can make Constellar Hiatis, which then turn into Constellar M7. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do for it, actually. It's not very good in a Galaxy deck at all. But uh, it's well, good by itself in decks that aren't that. I'm a big fan of how many good cards in this set are common rare super. 
It's really neat, right? We like we opened a box. Oh, we got a new Dark World card too. Which right. is, it's actually really powerful, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Dark Lords, like you almost never triggered your when your opponent makes you discard a card effect, and this just says your opponent's gonna make you discard those cards. So you're just gonna silver two of their cards back. You're gonna gold. You're gonna special a bunch from the grave. I don't even remember what they all do. I know Snow is insane. I know Graph is insane. I know Silver and Gold are both insane. Yep. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's just kind of nice. It's been a while since I opened a box. It's pulled like you know. Oh yeah, that's a, like the, this is a super trap hole. That's also, good. definitely not a bad idea to get every Vandred card and to get oh, zombie yeah, support absolutely. because uh, Dante came out at thirty dollars and then went to one hundred and fifteen. Forever. So until he was reprinted, that guy was very expensive. So when a TCG archetype comes out and it seems pushed and the cards seem very just generically powerful, get them every single time. Also, if they're every just, single time, if they're just not very expensive. When, you, when an archetype comes out and they're all rares, you, you get them. Because if they're ever good, you'll be like, no, I have these three rares that cost me probably zero dollars. But yeah, the cool thing about this set is you're going to get a lot of good cards if you just buy one box. It's not like one of those sets where you have to buy a case to get a place out of all the secret rares. You can just buy a box and you get a bunch of like really neat little cards in it. You got like a generic, you know. Like how much of the tricks the deck did we get? Because we got a bunch. We got like two of the, did we get two of the Stratos or one of the Stratos? Uh, we got like one Stratos. We got, like, the good level three. we got the field spell, we got one of the like shuffle back card, we got some of the good level three. The uh, tricks to have the that link monster yet? Holy Angel? Or is that next Holy set? Holy Angel is in this set. It is in this set? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. I don't remember what it does, uh, but I think it's okay. Okay, uh, I can remember part of its effect. It's uh, every time your opponent takes burn damage, it gains that much attack. Which is pretty cool if you reincarnation them on your turn and they just draw cards and burn a lot and they're like, ah, it's like 4k now. It's a bad time for them. For anyone that likes burn, it's like actually a good burn deck. It's what I like is that it's a burn deck, but it's not super obnoxious. I don't really think the strategy is to like stop your opponent doing anything and burning them. Because you're still summoning monsters and you like link summoning and kind of interacting. It's just oh, that you, cool. you're like burning them in addition to attacking them. Because the field spell also actually triggers when you do battle damage. So the link monster does, uh, whenever you summon a trickster, it burns for 200. Mm -hmm. Tricks is a points to can't be destroyed by battle card effects. Whenever the opponent takes damage from a trickster effect, it gains attack. It starts 2k, needs two trickster monsters, good in the trickster deck. You want to play trickster, you're going to want that one. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to, it's going to, going to be in there. Yeah, I think it's like, look, it's hard to design a burn archetype that isn't like either very bad or very oppressive. Yeah, you, damn right. You can print cards that say burn your opponent for 4k, but it's not going to be a lot of fun. Or you can print decks that are like burn your opponent for 100 for every card with a different name in the graveyard. I'm actually so surprised that Revendred Slayer is a rare, not a secret. Right. It's, it's, it's exactly the Dante of this archetype. It has to be the Dante of the archetype because it's him on the, the ritual spell as well, these two guys. Yeah, the ritual spell says protect zombie support. Exactly him. I, I, I implore you. Zombies Make sure you own three Mizuki and three Shirunui. Maybe not Solitaire. Solitaire might get. Solitaire's reprinted as the Megatins. Wait for the Megatins for Solitaire. Gozuki. Uh, Gozuki, uh, Book of Life, maybe Zombie Master, maybe Plague Spreader Zombie, maybe Malicious, maybe uh, Dark Greffa, Allure of Darkness. All of these cards are inexpensive for the most part, which is a good deal. Also, you can just build Vendor now if you want. Why not? I don't think it's very good though. You can. But you can play it, there's a lot of ritual support. Do it. Do it. There's a lot of zombie support. Yeah, that's it. Also, the cool thing is that Shirinoi Solitaire says normal summon uh, Omega, and Omega you just blink out of the link zone, which is really neat. He's one of the few. Also, ritual, ritual monsters don't use the extra deck zone, so. Yeah, he's one of the few, like, synchro that really survived the purge. Also, he's yeah. cheap now. Which is he cool. also is like six bucks. Mm. That set was really good. Yeah, it really was. Man, we're getting rambly now. Should we wrap this up? Yeah, probably. Cool. I'm gonna let you. Alright, that was Code of the Duelist. Uh, heaps of good cards, new link monsters, lots of stuff that you wanna grab. As always, if you need to know where to play, uh, you can go to Yu Gi Oh card slash Ian slash events, and Code of the Doors is released next week, or now, or it's out now, or Code of the Doors is out now. Go and buy some, it's good. Pretty good set, it doesn't afraid anything. <laughs>